Hello, we're going to look at a really common and I think often misunderstood data level protection measure, which is a firewall. So firewall is quite a technical measure. We're not going to go into loads of detail here, just what it does and some pros and cons of it. So a firewall is either a device or some software whose purpose is to monitor networks and filter messages sent over these networks based on certain rules, which are determined by the people owning the network. So the name firewall, does it sounds kind of cool I think <laughs> it's got that going for it but also the, the actual fire a firewall the job of a firewall inside a house is to stop a fire spreading between one room to another room via the wall and a firewall is really stopping malicious messages maybe done of service messages maybe messages containing malware spreading from one area to another area so usually from the internet to internal networks so for instance a firewall might be set up to block messages coming from certain websites. So perhaps the administrator set a, a list of websites he or she doesn't want to be connecting to their network, or maybe even a wider net, maybe it's blocking certain areas in the world. Maybe you know you've got a competitor in a certain country and you wanna be safe and block all messages from that country, it can be done. So these rules can be derived from a blacklist, a blacklist being a list of people, websites, countries, which are banned from a network in this case, you can also have a whitelist, people who are allowed in the network. And so really rules are being set and the, the firewall is able to block messages not adhering to these rules. And I did say when I was about to define it that it can be either device or software. So it can be both software or hardware, sometimes misunderstood. So first of all, let's look at what a firewall might do or how it might be set up if it was a hardware device. So actually they can be built into routers but actually let's assume we've got a firewall as a standalone hardware device like this, a pretty unassuming box usually. And we've got a pretty typical setup here. Let's say we've got a laptop connected to a firewall, connected to a router, and alongside the laptop might be hundreds, if not thousands of devices, depending on how big the internal network is. And let's say we've got, um, that's a hardware device. Let's say we've got YouTube and the user of a laptop wants to download a YouTube video. Let's assume that's allowed. You might go to a school where YouTube's blocked. Maybe your school IT staff have blocked YouTube and their firewall. But let's say YouTube is allowed. Well, first of all, it'll come from the internet via that router, first of all. Then it'll get passed to the firewall. And the firewall will decide if it is allowed in or not. So look up that blacklist. Is YouTube on the blacklist? No, it's not. Therefore, it will allow it into the network. Now, that will take not long. but It will take that fraction of a second to decide if it should be allowed in or not. That's fine, but what happens if we don't have a legitimate connection? Let's say we've got some attacker, he might be trying to install malware, he might be trying to access the back door, it really depends. So the message will go in from the internet in the same way via router, router, and this has got a firewall built in, it's just going to let it in, it doesn't know what to do otherwise. But the firewall here will hopefully go, okay, well, this attack is on the blacklist or he's not on the whitelist, therefore the message can't come in, and so that message does not end up at your computer. If it doesn't end up at that computer, there's not much the attacker is able to do at that point. So actually I would say a software firewall is more common. So we can have a firewall just as a program on your computer, often built into antivirus software or built into your operating system. So I use a, a firewall software. I don't have a hardware device. Um, so let's say we're just dealing with software as a, our firewall is just software, not a hardware device. It means it's running on our computer. Now this can be an issue in the sense that if we go for the same fee again, YouTube is fine, right? The firewall lets it into our computer, that's all right. But the attacker, the same thing will happen, assuming our firewall is able to block out the attacker. Well, the attacker's effectively got on your computer. Now, if a firewall is doing its job properly, it won't be able to do much on your computer, if anything. But uh, personally, I, I feel uncomfortable with the idea of your attack, uh, with an attacker being able to sort of reach your computer. Ideally, it would never get close that's why having a hardware firewall can be a slightly safer bet, although they tend to be more expensive and harder to set up. So that's the idea, right? Firewall trying to block traffic, which is suspicious. They can be relatively simple, just blocking based on areas, or they can be more sophisticated, where they're blocking based on patterns and trends and slightly more advanced technology. But that's the general premise. But let's just evaluate them, I think, because it's worth just talking pros and cons because they are so common and they're often misunderstood. So, and the first one advantage is, 
all firewalls can be customized to various extents for individual needs. So you can set your own blacklists, your own whitelists, and the firewall will just follow those rules. And they can be used to limit the effect of an attack we've looked at already, a denial of service attack, where an attacker is trying to really overload systems. Now, they work best with a hardware firewall because it's not really ever reaching our laptop, not as good when it's a software firewall. And it doesn't you know, completely stop the effect of a DOS attack because the DOS attack is really just trying to waste your time and you having to process for messages does waste time, but it can limit it because you're not responding to it. It's just blocked straight away. And also if we have software, the advantage of a software firewall is it tends to be easier to set up. Like I said, I've got a software firewall, not hard to set up. I wouldn't be able to really set up a hardware, I don't think, not easily at least. The software is usually not too bad. But the software, if you have sophisticated software, which I don't, it can be expensive, I'm talking thousands of pounds, if not more. It can be a lot of money. And especially if you have got a cheap firewall, uh, firewall or a very advanced one, it can be slow. They might take their time to decide if the traffic should be allowed or not, so it can slow down network. That's why a DOS attack can still have an effect. It can still clog things up because it's having to check every single message coming in. And as I was sort of saying, well, hardware can be a little bit harder to configure. And also it's easy to make mistakes. You might set up a firewall thinking you can relax, but actually you may not have configured it properly. There may be some vulnerability which could nullify the reason for having it. So firewalls as a concept are very simple, but bear in mind there are lots of different implementations, lots of different versions, some of which are better than others.